Hey everybody, welcome to Dan Bowen Photography. In this week I show you what's in my camera bag. So I guess a good place to start would be to actually just show you my camera bag. So I don't often take a camera bag with me. I usually will just throw my camera in my backpack and throw some extra clothes or something in there to pat it down. Um, because I usually just take like one camera and one lens with me. But if I am taking a little bit more gear, I will use this Low Pro bag. It's the Event Messenger 150. Um, it's really compact. It has a lot of removable compartments and stuff inside. I've pretty much removed everything and just have two compartments, one to put my camera in and one to put lens and film and that sort of thing in it. Uh, so it's, it's served me well. It doesn't really fit for my medium format camera, but you know, you get what you pay for, I guess. Now if I'm just doing like walkabout photography or doing like street photography or something, then I'm almost certainly going to have my Canon FTB 35mm camera with me. Now, if you watch my show, you've probably seen this camera a million times, but it's a fully manual camera, totally mechanical, all the controls are manual, and I really love it. It's got some, some great lenses that you can use for it, and I'll show you those in a minute, and it's just a fantastic camera. So for 35mm, this is really the only thing I have right now, and this is the camera that's in my bag most often when I'm out shooting film. Now as far as lenses go, I usually have my 50mm lens on the on the Canon FTB, but I also have two other lenses. I have an 85mm f1.8 lens, which is really great for portraits. I mean, this lens is really sharp. It's a fantastic lens. And then on the wide angle side, I have a 28mm f2 lens, which has been really good for doing like long exposure photography. Um, I've done some night photography with it, and it's been a really great lens for me. And both of these I picked up for fairly cheap. I think the 85mm was a little pricey, but this 28mm lens was like 30 bucks. And you can pick up a lot of Canon FD lenses for really cheap, and they're great glass. Now as far as film stocks go, I'm a color shooter, and I test out a lot of different films, but my two go-to uh, color films for 35mm are Kodak Portra 400, which is a color negative film, and Fuji Provia 100. Uh, Provia is probably my favorite, but it's a little bit more of a pain to get it processed. I have to mail it out, and it takes longer, and it's a little bit pricier. So if I'm just doing some random street photography or something, the Kodak Portrait 400 is really great. And both of them are really fantastic for portraits. Uh, but I lean towards the Provia a little bit more. All right, so next step up, let's talk about medium format. Now when I'm shooting medium format, I'm using this bad boy, this massive thing. Uh, this is the Pentacon 6. It's a 6x6 camera, and I have the Prism Viewfinder on it, and man, this thing is heavy. I mean, and it's pretty tricky to use, too. It's fully manual, fully mechanical, and you can get some really fantastic images out of it. I mean, the resolution on this thing is great. The lens is really great. Uh, this is the only lens I have on it. It's the 80mm lens, and like I said before, this doesn't really fit in that low pro bag I have. I can kind of shoehorn it in there, but it's really a pain. So I usually will just put this in my backpack if I'm taking it out with me, but this is not a camera I use in everyday life for like street photography or anything like that. I mainly use it for portraiture. Uh, so it's not something that's in my bag every day, but when it is, it's just a fantastic camera and I love using it. Now again, as far as medium format film goes, I pretty much shoot all color and I'm shooting uh, Fuji Provia and Kodak Portrait 400. I don't have a roll of that right now, but that's pretty much all I use when I'm shooting with the, the medium format camera. I occasionally use black and white film, and if I do, I'm usually shooting Kodak Tri-X, but it's not something I have in my camera very often. Uh, I also picked up this Lomo Chrome Purple, which I haven't shot with yet, but this is medium format film. It's also available in 35mm and it's sort of a fake color infrared film, so you can get some wacky colors. It's supposed to have really wacky, like, purple casts, so I'm really looking forward to shooting that. All right, some more fun stuff. Now, this is not a camera I use every day, but this is the Holga 120S. Um, it's a toy camera. It's made entirely out of plastic, and it's really a wacky camera, and you can get some pretty interesting results from it. 
Um, it's become a cult camera over the years, so if you haven't heard about the Holga, go Google and look up some information on it, because it's really interesting. I'm going to be doing a video on it once I shoot a few more rolls of film with this. Um, I picked this up for like 30 bucks on eBay, and you know, it's, it's an interesting camera, but again, it's not something that's in my bag every day, and when it is, I usually will just toss it in my backpack or something, but uh, it shoots medium format film, and like I said, you're going to get some wacky results with it, so it's something worth trying out if you haven't before. So I also like to shoot instant film on occasion, uh, and when I do, I'm usually using my Fuji Instax Wide 300. Now, again, I don't really shoot uh, instant film that often, uh, particularly because it's, it's a little pricey. Uh, the Instax film is, is kind of cheap, but the Impossible Project film for Polaroid cameras is just really pricey, so I don't shoot with it that much. But when I do, it's really fun. And again, like these cameras aren't in my bag every day, but it's something that I use occasionally. So when I do shoot with Polaroid cameras, I usually use Polaroid 600 cameras. I have a couple of these. One of them doesn't work, um, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, they're, they're cool little cameras. They're fairly easy to use. But again, like I said, Impossible Project Film is pretty pricey, so I don't shoot with these things on a regular basis. All right, so now we're in a couple other random things that I'll have in my bag. I usually have a few empty film canisters. Uh, just in case I forget mine or something or I want to put a roll into it. So I usually have a couple of those in my bag. Um, I also have like a notebook and a pen. This is particularly useful if I, I have an idea that I don't want to forget. Or mostly I will use it if I'm doing like long exposure photography at night and I want to write down my camera settings. Uh, so it's useful to have that in the bag and I usually just toss that in there and we'll always have it. And finally, I always have my smartphone with me because I use the Pocket Light Meter app to meter a scene and get the settings right. So yeah, that's pretty much all that I've got in my bag. So what's in your camera bag? I would love to know what you guys are shooting with as far as film gear goes. So let me know down in the comments uh, what you're shooting with, what kind of film stocks you're using, and also, you know, what gear are you lusting after? I know, personally, I would love to have a Hasselblad camera, but just money is tight right now, and that's just something that's on the wish list, but it's something to aspire to. So if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel by clicking on the red box next to my head, or by clicking on the subscribe button down below next to my name. I've got new episodes coming out every week, and if you subscribe, you can stay up to date on when those come out. Also, please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. It really helps me know that people are liking these videos and keeps me making new content. Also, I wanted to give a shout out to my mom. It's her birthday today. So, happy birthday, mom. I love you. So, anyhow, we will see you next week. And this has been another episode of Dan Bullen Photography.